But sin be sin. And let's face it, we're evil people without God to take our sins away. Amen. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Including all of his promises, the promised Holy Ghost. Yeah. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. We sometimes call that the golden rule. That's different. The golden rule of the world is he who has the gold makes the rules. Actually, that's what the Bible says too. The rich rule over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender. Did you ever think about how profound that is? That we live in a land that is a debtor nation. Everybody is so in debt primary concern is what is my credit number so you can go into debt even more credit number shouldn't make any difference and now they're they're setting your insurance rates and everything else by your credit number how does that affect you know your car insurance whatever if your credit score is low you, you pay more money Does that make you a worse driver if you owe money? It has nothing to do with it. So it's, it's, uh, this, these are incredible times. The golden rule. If you want to be treated well, treat others well. Just that simple. There was a, a man who started a company, actually, called the Golden Rule Company. Does anybody here happen to know what that company became? Everybody's heard of it. It was called the Golden Rule when it first started. And for a number of years after. Just curious, anybody knows that? Well, I'll tell you who started the company, and then I'll answer the question. James Cash Penny, J.C. Penny, started the Golden Rule Company. And as late as the 1970s, if somebody shoplifted in a J.C. Penny store, they let them go. They, you know, cautioned them reprimanded them, let them go. Which I think is amazing. But uh, J.C. Penney would not uh, allow any of his employees to do certain things. If you worked for J.C. Penney, you had to be at home by 10 o'clock at night. He didn't want people working for him that ran around in the town. A man could not be shaved at a barber shop because that was considered kind of a playboy sort of a guy, you know? And this whole list of rules that you had to follow or you couldn't work for him. Well, those were the days, huh? Hmm. Anyway, sometimes I do appreciate a little of this history once in a while. I don't know. <laughs> So now he says in verse 13, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Now when he says straight here, 
Straight means a very narrow, narrow area. Straight and narrow, very narrow. As if in a waterway between two land bodies, like the Strait of Magellan or uh, the, uh, I don't feel very geographical today, I guess. But in various, uh, various places in the world, uh, you have Strait, Strait of Gibraltar, for an example. Very narrow area. And he says, this is the way to heaven. It's narrow, straight. But wide is the gate, broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. There are all kinds of ways to go to hell. But only one way to get to heaven. And that's Jesus Christ, your Savior. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. Doesn't that hit you hard? Few there be. Few there be that find it. Thank God that he helps us find the way. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly they are ravening wolves. A false prophet in sheep's clothing. Well now that's interesting because these ministers Catholic priests, Lutheran ministers, so forth. I remember, the, I used to be a old line Missouri Synod Lutheran years ago. And uh, but that was my mother's side. My father's side was Catholicism and there was, uh, of course, uh, the, uh, the occult element, which I got into, unfortunately. But I remember the, uh, going to this old Missouri Synod Lutheran church, and the pastor always wore a black, solid black robe, a little white collar, black robe. And then I remember, I think it was probably in the 60s, early 60s, suddenly he appeared on Sunday with a, the black robe with a white robe over the top of the black. And people started saying, hey, he's turned Catholic. That's what the priest does. And it occurred to me, okay, the, this, this white robe, this, uh, you know, the, the fleece of a sheep is white. So you've got this wolf with black on, and he puts white over it. He's in sheep's clothing. So he stands there and represents his particular ministry in that fashion. Very interesting how things fall into place. But basically it's what's on the inside. Inwardly they are ravening wolves. I know the uh, pastor that we had for a while in Clintonville at St. Martin Lutheran Church many years ago they found out he, he often had slurred speech I mean, really really slurred speech finally he just and he was the actually the over, district overseer over a whole bunch of churches like a bishop and finally he just came out and he said he had this aversion to orange vodka and we get up to ministry, he'd be hammered all the time. An orange vodka. So he just decided, well, I'll move on to another, another uh, <laughs> might as well say parish, another congregation. 